Today, we are trying to beat Stardew Valley in year one while never talking to Clint. Because Clint stinks. Your trash, kid. You see, even though Clint is technically important because he provides tool upgrades, opens up geodes for loot, and gives out the furnace recipe, he is absolutely the worst villager in Pelican Town. And that's why we are making Clint miserable by completing the community center, marrying Emily, and reaching the bottom of the mines, all without ever speaking a word to Clint. And trust me, there are some moments you're just going to have to see to believe. But before we get started, if you like videos like this, it would mean the world if you would like and subscribe to this channel. I love posting Stardew shenanigans like this, and by subscribing, Subscribing, you'll be sure to be notified every time I do something else to ruin Clint's life. Last spring, we made a ton of progress on our journey by completing our barn, reaching floor 40 in the mines, and making a large dent in the community center. But there was a problem. We didn't get a single copper, iron, or gold bar in the traveling cart. All things I would need to get in the cart since I wouldn't be able to get a furnace from stinky Clint without talking to him during his cutscene. Or at least that's what I thought. Thanks to Joe, the hero of Pelican Town, I was shown the light and reminded that certain mobs have a slight chance to drop copper, iron, and gold bars. And when I say slight, I mean slight. Shadow Brutes and Shamans have a 4% chance to drop a copper bar, a 2% chance to drop an iron bar, and only a 1% chance to drop a gold bar. That's not terrible because Squid Kids have a 5% chance to drop a gold bar. And if I'm really, really desperate, the Sprites have a 0.1% chance to drop a gold bar. And even though those odds aren't great, it means I at least have a way to get these items outside side of random luck. Again, absolutely massive shout out to Joe for giving me all of this information. A true legend. This summer was going to start just like spring. I needed to get summer crops planted and set up so I could ensure I got five star produce I needed for the bundles. And I made sure every crop had fertilizer this time. I wasn't having another close call like I had with the parsnips last spring. And with the farm set up, I was off to find Emily to work on our relationship. She doesn't know it's a relationship yet, but I was in her dream last spring. So I mean, that's it's gotta be a sign. Right? So I actually did a little bit more research before this video. It's amazing how much that actually helps. And apparently every day that you don't talk to villagers in Stardew, you actually lose friendship parts with them. So I have to be far better this summer about finding Emily every single day and talk to her. And after finding Emily, we were off to find some fish on this fine sunny day of summer. I managed to snag a sturgeon and after an incredibly fierce battle, a puffer fish for the bundles. This was solid progress for day one. Far better than I expected to have, but we still had a lot to do and the sacred bars of Stardew Valley still had to be found. I also spent a lot of time in week one completing quests. Joe, yes, the same Joe as earlier, our hero from our Discord server, a nice subtle plug to join the Discord there, also mentioned that you can get quality sprinklers from the prize tickets Lewis gives out for completing quests. Sadly, I didn't get any sprinklers from the machine, but I did get this orange tree. I mean, I guess that's cool, right? You know what is cool? Emily. All throughout week one, I spent a lot of time making sure I talked to her every single day. You know, the thing I should probably be doing every day if I really want to marry her. But not only that, we used the topaz and aquamarines I found while progressing to floor 50 in the mines this week to reach five hearts with her by the end of the week, officially halfway there. And by Friday, with our new friendship hearts, pockets full of gold and farm fully planted, I left for my very first traveling cart of the summer. As I approached the car, I got really nervous. These carts are so important to the run and I only had 24 carts left before the end of year one. I know that may seem like a lot, but we really got nothing in the eight carts from spring and desperately needed some good news. The stakes were high and in many ways, the fate of this run lies in the hands of these carts. And well, it wasn't terrible. We got another sprinkler and I was incredibly tempted to buy the truffle oil, but for over 4,000 gold, I just couldn't swing it. I would be able to get other things for the artisan bundle through the fruit cave or my animals, meaning it wasn't a big deal. And after a pretty boring Saturday, it was finally Sunday. And after nine mediocre traveling carts, it finally happened. We got a bar. The traveling cart delivered to us the most beautiful iron bar I have ever seen in my life. I felt the tears of joy well up in my eyes. I couldn't believe it. Honestly, the rest of the day didn't matter to me. We were gifted an iron bar and I couldn't be happier. And it's in the moments of pure joy like this that you really begin to appreciate all that Pelican Town has to offer. The peaceful sounds of the valley, the joy of growing crops, and the beauty of growing yourself along the way. Everything is so peaceful, and then this guy ruins it. 
Heading into week two, I think it's clear that I still have a lot I need to do, but the most important thing on my to-do list, upgrade my barn. Meaning altogether, I would need 37,000 gold. Thanks to how much work I did clearing my farm in spring, I already had most of the stone and wood I would need, but the gold was going to be a different story. I was close to having enough for the first upgrade, but still needed to collect another 2,000 gold before the end of the day today if I wanted to get my barn upgraded this week. So after getting my crops watered, I used one of the fancy beach totems I got for completing a bundle to get to the beach as fast as possible and I fished my little heart out. I was really racing against time here because if I didn't get the gold I needed to get to Robins before 5 p.m. today, I wouldn't be able to upgrade my barn. And if I didn't get it today, Robin isn't at her shop on Tuesdays because she has to work out. And then the luau was Wednesday of this week, meaning that if I didn't get this upgrade started today, it could delay my progress by a whole week this summer, meaning I had to make every fish count. But as I was deep in thought fishing, I felt something on the line and it was a fish that would put me over 12,000 gold and it came just in time, a puffer fish. And as I began the mini game, the fight of my life began back and forth, up and down. It was fierce and I knew if I missed this fish, it would make my time frame way too narrow and I would possibly miss upgrading my barn this week. So I focused up and after a long battle, I caught the mother puffer. I threw myself into willies, sold all of my fish, saw my gold to take above 12k and ran as fast as I could to get to Robins before she closed. It was intense. To be honest, it, it wasn't that close. I had a whole hour to spare, but, but look at us. The big barn was officially being built, meaning we would absolutely have enough gold by the end of summer to get our first pigs. Exciting stuff. As I wrapped up week two, the traveling carts were sadly, yet again, a disappointment. So I spent some time in the mines and later that day, I went to give Emily a gift. But to my surprise, she happened to show me a special dance she had prepared for me. Honestly, this is why I love this game so much. Every villager has such incredible stories and adorable quirky moments that make getting to know them so much fun. That is all of them except for Clint. As I sat there and enjoyed Emily's dance, I was reminded just how much fun gaming can be. I mean, look at that face, that's a genuine happy Happiness, something I haven't felt playing League of Legends, well, ever. I just love this game so much. The only appropriate way to end such a beautiful moment was with a slow clap. And with all the progress I made in the first two weeks of summer, it was clear week three needed to have one main focus, the mines. With everything else where it needed to be, the mines were calling and I must answer. So I went on my way, spending hour after hour, day after day, grinding in the mines in my never ending quest to find bars and drop floors. You know, I really thought that would sound cooler when I wrote it, but we're just gonna roll with it. It was a grind, hopping from floor to floor to try to spawn in as many shadow brutes and shamans as I could. Could. The benefit to this was not only that I saved a ton of time by not having to clear each floor, but it also gave me lots of void essence that I could sell to make this time profitable as well. It wasn't quite as much as I would have made fishing, but still enough to be beneficial. And I did this for hours, not in game hours, but real hours. I was honestly exhausted and over it. Remember in spring when I said that I didn't min max games? <laughs> yeah, this is why. I have so much respect for people who can grind through games like this and perfectly min max and speed run these types of games because I don't have the patience for it. Maybe one day, but not today. After a week of this grinding, I was ready to give up on getting any of the bars I needed from the mines. I mean, a 2% chance to get a bar? I was delusional to think that that would be easy to do, but I managed to convince myself to do one last floor. I couldn't believe it. After hours of grinding, and just as I was on the verge of giving up, an absolute miracle. It was as if Yoba was declaring that I was doing the right thing by ignoring Clint. It was just the motivation I would need to press on, and I would need it, because as I looked through the items I still needed to collect for other bundles, I made a tragic realization. In order to complete the bulletin board bundles, I would need oak resin and maple syrup, things that would most easily be collected by using tappers on trees. And what do you need to craft tappers? Not just 
just one, but two more copper bars. Needless to say, I had my work cut out for me. But on the bright side, in the midst of my grinding in the mines, I also used the gold I was gaining from my crops to upgrade my barn to a deluxe barn and purchase our first pig. But not only that, we also had enough to build our coop as well to get that process started. Even with the realization of the need to grind out more copper bars, I was on top of the world. And to make things even better, I cut cheese in the traveling cart. Honestly, this wasn't a huge deal, but I really love cheese. Heading into the last week of summer, I was a little lost on what to do. I knew I needed the copper bars to get my syrup and resin, and I still needed to get to the bottom of the mines. So because money wasn't as much of an issue at this point, I decided to press into the mines some more with the goal of this time reaching the bottom and hopefully finding a gold bar as well. Up to this point, I was able to pretty easily make about 10 floors of progress per day, but this was getting more and more difficult, mainly because my pickaxe was really starting to show its lack of upgrades, making it harder to break every rock in the mines. But even with that, I managed to complete 10 more floors and collected my first star drop to remind me of not Clint. I'm sorry, it's just it's just too much. <laughs> but I did all of this only to realize it was already 1 a.m. and I was going to need to hustle to get back to my farm in time. I just got so caught up in the grind that I completely lost track of time and now I was going to pay for it. I was certain that a trip to Harvey's was in my future, but as luck would have it, I barely made it with absolutely no time to spare. And the next day, it was time to do it all over again. Only this time I would be a little more careful about what time I left. I was honestly so excited to be done with the mines today. I was getting pretty burnt out on farming bars and grinding out levels. I just wanted to reach the bottom and put off getting my other bars until fall. But the game had other plans, gifting me not only the gold bar I needed, but two more copper bars this day, meaning I actually had enough to craft my tapper. I was exhilarated. I've never felt this much adrenaline pulsing through my veins before. I mean, what are the odds? Two copper bars and a gold bar? Are you kidding me? Insanity. I'm not sure what I did to deserve this from Yoba, but again, who was I to stand in the way of fate? After finishing my day in the mines, I dropped off my gold bar along with a few other community center items and went on my way. By this point, I had completed several bundles and even managed to finish the boiler room in its entirety. This was huge because it also meant I was given a furnace as a gift. And because I can collect as much iron and gold ore as I want, it meant I was able to begin crafting quality sprinkling to use on my farm. I just needed to go back and collect all of that ore now. Oh, and did I mention what's going on with Emily recently? I mean, you could technically say we're official now. I officially gave Emily a bouquet and now we are fully committed. That being said, there is a slight dilemma. I've never seen Emily's eight heart cutscene before, but based on some comments I've read, I know that Clint is there and does have some dialogue. So I'm leaving it up to you all. Should I go on with the plan and go to the fashion show where I may have to be involved in a group conversation where Clint speaks, or should I just avoid it? It's a bit blurry as to if that counts as me talking to Clint. So I'm going to leave it up to you all. Let me know in the comments what you think. Regardless, just like Emily, I had a big smile on my face as I began to wrap up the summer. But it wasn't over yet. I still had two traveling carts to visit and there was a chance this already incredible summer could get even better. The primary need, a red cabbage. As you probably guessed, I didn't get anything great in the carts. I did manage though earlier this week to plant an apple tree with the hopes to get some apples in fall for the fodder bundle and smelt down some of the ores for sprinklers. And with the summer coming to a close, it was time for what is in my opinion, the best Stardew festival of the year. I don't know why, but there's just always been something so calming and peaceful about the jellies. It instantly makes me feel nostalgic for all the memories I've made in this lovely little game. And if you'd like to see those memories for yourself, check out the videos on the screen now, and I'll see you next fall.